Okay, it's Scott Atwood. I'm going to do one on Ask the Doctors, Daniel's 70th week. <laughs> this is probably going to be more than one part because these guys have a lot to say about it. And uh, the 70th week of Daniel, of course, is a big prophecy uh, section. And I'm going to do verse uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse uh, 24 through 27 and I'm going to have to break it up because I've been through these uh, and actually the doctors have quite a bit to say about that so I will start um, today with Rutland because he has the least to say believe it or not let's see Dr. Peter S. Rutland all right, the Holy Bible says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy, thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again in the wall even in troublous times. And after Three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one day, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation. Y'all got to excuse me. I can't pronounce this. One, oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Well, that's clear enough. We don't have to go. <laughs> this is very controversial. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on this, but uh, this is what Ruckman says. He doesn't say much on this. He says, uh, verses 24 through 27, deal with the famous doctrine of Daniel's 70th week. Of all the many works done on the subject, the best are Clarence Larkin's book of Daniel and Dispensational Truth. The passage connects the first and second advent of Jesus Christ as it does in many other Old Testament prophecies. 1 Peter 1, 10, and 12. So he's pretty much just referring you to uh, Clarence Larkin, which he does have. Uh, I have those books, and they are good. All right. Dr. Henry Morris. It's a thick one, boys. If you want, uh, if you want a lot of commentary, this is this is a good one, and you're fixing to find out why. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to read the scripture again. Uh, if you got it in your Bible, you can look at it again. All right, he says, uh, 924, 70 weeks. The word for weeks is actually sevens, and the content it obviously means seven-year periods, Daniel had been meditating on God's promise that the captivity of his people would be 70 years, but then Gabriel brought the message that not just 70 years, but 77s of years were determined on the people. That is, God would be dealing with Israel and his covenant people for a period of 490 years. The events prophesied for these 490 years are critical 
for the proper understanding of eschatology. Eschatology is just a big word, means a last study of last things. And prophecy. Furthermore, the remarkable full fulfillment of the key portions of the prophecy of the 70 weeks is certainly one of the strongest evidence for the supernatural inspiration of scriptures. 924. Finish the transgression. Much of the prophecy has been fulfilled, but not all. Its complete accomplishment, an end of sins, everlasting righteousness, awaits the second coming of Christ. Consequently, since far more than 490 years have passed, there must be at least one significant gap implied in its development. This seems to be clear in the following verses. However, many eminent expositors have understood it as unbroken sequence terminating in the first coming and the death of Christ. Verse 25 commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. The 490 year period begins with the commandment to rebuild the holy city. Some have taken this to uh, be the decree of the Emperor Cyrus in about 536 BC recorded by Ezra. This is unlikely because the commandment only decreed the re rebuilding of the temple, Ezra 1.3. Eventually, there was no formal commandment to rebuild the city itself until the time of Nehemiah, when a later Persian emperor, Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes did make such a decree, Nehemiah 2, 4 through 8. This was in about 446 B.C., Verse 25, seven weeks. The 490-year period is divided into three components, 49 years, 434 years, and seven years, respectfully. The first was eventually to be occupied with the actual completion of the streets and walls of the city in troublous times. As described in the books of Nehemiah and Malachi, perhaps most significantly, the 49-year period did determine with Malachi's prophecy, which marked the close of the Old Testament revelation. Verse 25, three score and two weeks. After 49-year period was to be another period of 434 years, before Messiah would come as a prince. This period between the two testaments was marked by the fulfillment of some of Daniel's other prophecies, the fall of Persia, the rise of Greece, then of the great Roman Empire, and in Israel the conflicts with Egypt and Syria and the wars of the Maccabees. In all, there are there would be 69 weeks or 483 years unto Messiah the Prince. Verse 26, Messiah, Messiah be cut off. If the 483 year period began in 446 BC, its end would seem to be at AD 37. However, there is much evidence that what might be called a prophetic year was 360 years, 60 days instead of 365. The original created year was apparently 12 30 day months. Compare Genesis 7, 11, 24, and 8, 3, and 4. Also, the year associated with the end times seems to be the same, Revelation 11, 2, and 3. If this factor were applied to the 70 week prophecy, then 483 calendar years would be only would only be 476 prophetic years, allowing the first fact that Jesus 
was actually born about 4 B.C. This was the date when King Herod died. So after Jesus was born, the terminal date of the prophecy becomes sometime between A.D. 30, the year when Jesus when Jesus then the terminal oh, I'm sorry when Jesus was between 33 and 34 years of age this of course is the year of the, his crucifixion when he was cut off but not for himself for the prophecy was given in about 536 BC well over half a millennium before its fulfillment, the probability that Daniel could guess the date of the manifestation and crucif crucifixion of the Messiah is essentially zero. Only supernatural inspiration can account for, for fulfilled prophecies like this. In fact, these events were fulfilled almost two centuries even after the date assigned to Daniel by liberal scholars who deny that such prophecies can be valid. Verse 26, the prince shall come. The prince shall come is obviously not Messiah the prince, for he will have been cut off in the context of the previous prophecies given by Daniel. This prince can be none other than the king of fierce countenance, of the preceding chapter 8:23 the sanctuary the city and the sanctuary were destroyed by the roman general later emperor titus in 70 AD this would indicate that the coming evil prince would be a great leader from one of the many nations which eventually developed out of the old roman empire a flood. The flood marking the end of the destruction of Jer Jerusalem can also be translated overflowing, probably referring to the great dispersion of the Jews into all the nations enforced by the Romans in AD 135. Desolations and determined. A better translation might be, and unto the end wars and desolations are determined. When Messiah, the Prince of Peace, was cut off, peace was permanently cut off from the world as well. This is another remarkable prophecy in, a, in the 1900 plus years since there, since there have been wars and rumors of wars. Mark 20, or Matthew 24, 6, in one part of the world or another, practically every year in the current world, 2005, this is when he wrote this, probably over 40 local wars are raging in various parts of the world. Verse 27, he shall confirm that sentence of he must be the person last mentioned, that is, the prince that shall come, 926. And the one whose people had destroyed the city, the context in these verses seemed clearly to preclude any reference to Messiah. This can be done, can be none other than the Antichrist. Uh, verse 24, 27, uh, one week. Finally, the 70th week begins with a treaty made by the Antichrist with the Jews, apparently allowing them to reestablish their temple and its ceremonies in Jerusalem. Uh, but note that this week of 70 weeks only begins after the following events have taken place after the 69th week was finished. Number one, the Messiah has been cut off and put to death, A.D. 30. Number two, Jerusalem and its temple have been destroyed, A.D. 70. Number three, the Jewish people have exiled into all the nations, A.D. 135. Four, number four, 
wars and desolations persist in the world to the end, at least from A.D. 135 to the present and beyond. <clears throat> Midst of the week, the future seven-year period will be divided into two halves. The first three and a half years will see the ancient temple worship restored in Jerusalem under the protection of the prince that shall come, who will have archived sufficient power by this time to make such a treaty. The last half will be begin when he breaks this treaty and demands worship of himself and his satanic master setting up his own image in the holy place. And he gives about 20 verses. Much of the book of Revelation is occupied with the details of this climactic seven-year period of world history, overspreading the abominations. The overspreading of abominations can be paraphrased as the ultimate and blasphemies, idolatry, abomination in the word is a word often used and phrased as the ultimate and Okay, scripture for an idol and, and overspreading refers to wings replacing the mercy seat in the holy place in the temple will be the image of the beast and the wings shadowing his image will replace the outstretched rings of the uh, cherubim. Christ called this the abomination of desolation, Mark thirteen fourteen, inciting this event is still future. Christ acknowledged that Daniel was indeed a prophet. Whew! Okay, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to do another one uh, on the other uh, doctors because that's that's a pretty long one. Anyhow, what do you think about Daniel's prophecy? Um, there's a lot of opinions out there. I'd like to hear it, and uh, I still need some verses, so if you have any verses you want me to look up, uh, let me know. And God bless you, and read your Bibles. I'll, I'll have the second in just a little while.